Our gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of St. Mark, the fourth chapter, starting with the 26th verse. Mark writes, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Jesus spends a lot of his earthly ministry talking about faith, both explicitly and through parables. Jesus walks with crowds of people who are hungrily absorbing all Jesus has to offer them, all the insight into the living water, the savior of the world. All Jesus has to tell the the how to have faith, how to make it through this world. Faith. What does it mean to have faith? Where does our faith come from? Our faith changes as we age and grow, doesn't it? It waxes and wanes. It grows and matures. Our faith hits speed bumps and goes through both highs and lows. After reading our gospel lesson for this week, these are the questions I wrestled with. What is faith? How do we live it? How do we show it? How does it sustain us? this idea of faith, because that is why we are all here, here in this place, because we have faith in a living God who graces us with his presence, who loves us unconditionally, and we want our faith to grow. We want to celebrate with our faith-filled believers. Our faith is part of our identity as humans. As we prepare at Christ the King to invite children, families, volunteers, and everyone else who is helping with and participating in Vacation Bible School, which starts tomorrow, into our building, this idea of faith surfaces frequently. After all, a large portion of children's ministry, a large portion of church in general, is teaching and modeling faith. That is what church is, a place where we are able to catch faith, to help gain insights into how we make our faith grow a place where people are safe to explore their fears and doubts, the things that trap their faith, the things that keep our faith from growing. So at any rate, VBS starts tomorrow. Then on Thursday, we are taking our fourth through sixth graders and some faithful adult and high school helpers out to Maplewood State Park. Then a week from tomorrow, we will have all of our five-year-olds through third graders in our building for a week learning and playing and growing in their faith, as they are taught that Jesus will always rescue them. And running throughout the next two weeks is this idea of faith, faith in Jesus Christ that will always sustain us, that carries us through the years from infancy to old age, that allows us to grow and blossom into the people God created us to be. Because our theme this year is the fact that Jesus will always rescue us, when we are scared, when we worry, when we are lonely or struggle, especially when we make mistakes, and even when we're powerless. This living God is who we put our faith in, this ginormous God who loves us and will never leave us. As I was reflecting on this sermon and on vacation Bible school, I couldn't help but remember that children have a ton to teach us about faith, Although we, adults, think we are teaching our kids faith, which we might be, they, our children, have a lot more to teach us. 
they are the best teachers when it comes to faith. Have you ever watched a group of children? They are fearless. They have the confidence that all adults hope and wish for. The confidence that adults often have to fake. After all, we have the phrase, fake it till you make it, for a reason. Confidence and faith are similar things. Paul mentions both in his, letters to, in his letter to Corinth. Children can teach us about both. And although I namely want to talk about faith, a quick pause to tell you a story about confidence. I shared this story a couple years ago after it happened, but it's worth repeating to make my point. A couple summers ago, we were participating in Vacation Bible School in the woods. All the kids were asked to carry something from the van down to the beach. If you've been at Maplewood State Park, it's about a two-minute walk from the landing where you can park the van down to the beach. You go down a little hill through a little path. So at any rate, the kids all had to carry something along with all their swim gear. So finally, we got most of the kids loaded up and they had already taken off. And we got to the last item, a watermelon. And our last kid, ready to take an item, was one of our girls who already had her hands filled. Towel, flip-flops, sunscreen, everything for a day at the beach. But she wanted to do her part. She was confident she would be able to get the watermelon down to the beach, one-handed. Sleep deprived, and she was ready. I was willing to trust her against the better judgment of the other adult leaders. I allowed her to take the watermelon. Shortly after she departs, the adult leaders and myself were, were getting ready to go down to the beach enjoying a quick moment. There was one adult leader down there, but the rest of us were enjoying a quick moment of, whew, the kids are down at the beach. But shortly after this, I hear, uh-oh. I ask what happened, and the watermelon has somehow landed on the ground. I tell her, again, probably not my best advice, but I tell her to just gently roll the watermelon down the hill. It, you, it, you should be fine. In case you haven't guessed the end of this story, a few minutes later, the adult leaders and I finish our walk down to the beach, and all along the path are pieces of watermelon. No rind or anything, just the pink watermelon pieces. So needless to say, the watermelon had seen better days. I did feed that watermelon to the kids. They didn't know. <laughs> Why waste it? Confidence comes easy to our children, as does their faith. This child had no problem believing she could do it. She, and she knew that the worst thing that could happen is the watermelon would land on the ground, which it did. But there was nothing else. She was confident she could do it. She had faith that she would be OK, even if she didn't. As we teach children the Bible, they don't seem to question the stories we read. Of course God put Jonah in a whale. Why, yes, God did allow the Israelites to pull down the wall of Jericho just by walking around it. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus himself was raised from the dead. These stories, these foundations to our faith, don't cause our children to blink an eye. Of course God can do that. As our children learn about their faith, they ask the hard questions. They want to know more, dig deeper, figure out even more about this faith that they have. Confidence and faith, two things our children are pros at, two things they can teach us. What I have found is that somewhere along the way, from infancy to old age, somewhere in there our faith starts to wane. We have less and less concrete faith as we age. Life gets harder, and it just gets more and more difficult to trust, to trust other people, to trust ourselves, to trust the God who loves us unconditionally. Because as adults, we need more proof of faith. Whereas Paul reminds us in his letter to Corinth that we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't always get the sight to back up our faith. Children take things as they are, whereas we adults want proof. And I would argue that God gives us the proof we ask for. We just have forgotten how to look for it. God cares for us, and when we flounder in our faith, which happens from time to time, or more frequently, God wants to reassure us, which he does, but sometimes we miss the signs. In our gospel story today, Jesus tells us the parable of the mustard seed. This is one of my favorite parables because Jesus uses, 
one of my favorite parables that Jesus uses to teach the disciples because I think it is the easiest and most comforting parable we have. Jesus knew that faith would be hard for adults, which is why he told his disciples to have faith like children. Jesus knew that as children grew into adults, their faith would waver, which is why he compared adult faith to the mustard seed. This is the tiniest seed we have at our disposal, which then grows into the largest tree, which is a great metaphor for our faith. Because many times our faith is small, we grasp at straws, we have enough faith to sustain us through a day, and then muster up more for the next day. Our faith at times is tiny. But Jesus reminds us that even having tiny faith is massive. Even a mustard-sized faith will make drastic changes for the kingdom of God. All we need is enough faith for today. Tomorrow will provide the faith we need then. God wants us to have enough faith and confidence so that the next time we are presented with a task, we can say, I've got this. Because we have faith, God will provide. Even mustard seed faith. Faith is hard. Frederick Buechner, noted author and theologian, once wrote, Faith is stepping out into the unknown with nothing to guide us but a hand just beyond our grasp. Faith is stepping out into the unknown with nothing to to guide us, but a hand just beyond our grasp. It is God's hand that is just beyond our grasp, which is hard for us to realize. We spend the majority of our adult life researching and planning for decisions, and faith asks us to just step out into the unknown, and we have to trust that God will catch us and provide. We have to rely on someone other than ourselves, which is one of the reasons why faith might be easier for our children. They grow up relying on people to care for them, so of course they would be able to rely on God as well. But being able to step out into the unknown, to have faith, is hard. When things don't go as we expect, our faith wavers. And because we live in a world with other people, our faith will always be fluctuating. Some days will be easier than others to have faith, and then some patches of our life will be really hard. But Jesus reminds us that mustard seed-sized faith is all we need. So even during the hardest patches in our life to have faith, all we need is a tiny kernel. And all of us can muster that up. And if we have that amount of faith, we will continue to thrive. We will continue to move forward. God will always continue to provide. After all, faith is stepping out into the unknown with nothing to guide us but a hand just beyond our grasp. As we leave from this place, may you spend time with children, learning how to have faith and confidence. Faith in a God who loves us unconditionally, who showers us with grace, asks us for faith the size of mustard seeds, whose hand is always just beyond our grasp, leading us forward. And this, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is good news. Amen. <laughs>